Hello, boys and girls. Uh, I'm going to take my mask off because I'm far away from Miss Shannon. And as you know, she and I are the only ones here. Do you know what time it is, though? No matter what time you're watching, it is story time. And Panda and I are so happy that you're still joining us for story time. So let's get Panda out of his box. You know how grumpy he is when he has to get up. Come on, Panda. Come on, Panda. Well, he wants to know if it's cold. Well, Panda, you know, it's the end of March and it's a little cold, but we hope we're moving towards spring. Ah. Well, I know everybody's tired of Yes, everybody's tired of COVID too, but let's just do the best we can. So, okay, I know your binoculars are in here. I know you want to look for people. Okay. Well, Panda says he just likes to look around because someday he knows he's going to be surprised and the boys and girls are going to be there. But we are ready to welcome you. So, welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll stretch and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. Oh, Panda says he doesn't have any fun until it's story time. All right, let's sing our, our song. Ready? Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is middle finger? Where is middle finger? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is ring finger? Where is ring finger? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is Pinky? Where is Pinky? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Yay! What? Well, Panda said he likes to sing, but you know, his claws don't work very well, but for doing the finger part. But he can do this part. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Stand up, girls. Stand up, girls. How are you today, girls? Ah, oh, we're so glad. And we're glad you're here. Where are the boys? Where are the boys? There they are. There they are. How are you today, boys? Ah, oh, you're wonderful too. Yay! We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. All right. Time for the stories. Now, this week, April 1st, is what some people call April Fool's Day. And it's a day when people try to play tricks on other people. Now, 
I am not playing any tricks on you because I don't like people to play tricks on me. But I'm going to read you this story that's called April Foolishness by Teresa Bateman. Life on the farm keeps a gal on her toes. That's what Grandma thought as she flung on her clothes. She grinned, for the grandkids had come to stay, and wouldn't you know it, they picked the right day. Grandpa, oh, Grandpa, Grandpa, the cows have got loose. I think Big Brown Bessie has just stepped on a goose. Ah! Imagine, said Grandpa, good gracious, alas. Then he poured some milk in a tall, frosty glass. He thinks they're playing a trick on him. Grandpa, oh, Grandpa, the chickens are out. They're squawking and squabbling and just racing about. Huh. Imagine, said Grandpa, amazing. Oh, my, as he popped some eggs into the skillet to fry. He's thinking that they're tricking him, and he's not going to be tricked. Grandpa, oh, Grandpa, the pigs broke the gate. <gasps> They're in the tomatoes, hurry, don't wait. Imagine, said Grandpa, I'm really quite shaken. He reached in the fridge and he got out the bacon. Grandpa, Grandpa, the goats are all freed. They're running around in a smelly stampede. Oh, look at all that clean clothes that have been on the line getting just, ooh, mushed up by them. Imagine, said Grandpa, it's really quite scary. Then he sliced the goat cheese that he bought from the dairy. Grandpa, Grandpa, the sheep are all gone. I heard they're munching on somebody's lawn. Oh, imagine, said Grandpa, I hope things get better. He opened the closet and got out a sweater. He is sure they're trying to trick him, and he's not going to fall for it. Grandpa, why won't you listen to me? The farm's going nuts. If you'd look, you would see. But Grandpa just grinned as he took out the bread, and he popped in some toast for his breakfast instead. Then Grandma appeared. What a hullabaloo! Who's causing this noise? The grandkids or you? It's nothing, said Grandpa. Ignore them, I say. They're trying to trick me. It's April Fool's Day. But honey, said Grandpa, you'll find to your sorrow it's not April Fool's Day today, but tomorrow. Ah! Then Grandpa turned red and he gave out a roar. He sped through the kitchen and dashed out the door. Grandma just smiled as she pulled up a stool. She nibbled his toast and she called, April Fool. <laughs> well, that's how one family played a trick on Grandpa. But also, at the end of March, beginning of April, we are really, really waiting for spring. And this book is called Snow Rabbit, Spring Rabbit, A Book of Changing Seasons. When snow falls to the ground and all the trees are bare, Everyone knows it's winter, including the rabbit. Some fly away from the cold. Those birds are flying south. Some have a long, cozy sleep where they live. Some swim to warmer waters while some have a thick, woolly coat. 
they can stay in the snow. Some gather extra food for the winter, while some travel far to find things to eat. Some stay very still, while some keep busy. See the underground, the rabbits? They keep busy moving fast and staying warm. I said rabbits, I meant mouse. But when the snow is melted and the trees are in bloom, then everyone knows it's spring, including the rabbit. All right, I know I'm looking for spring. I think you probably are too. So let's go over to our storyboard for a little poem story over there. Okay, boys and girls, I thought these rabbits looked kind of like our snow rabbit. So count them with me. One, two, three, whoops. Oh, come on, get in there. Four and five. All right, now. You can say this part with me. Hippity hop, hippity hay. Okay, say it with me. Hippity hop, hippity hay. Five little bunnies went out to play. Hippity hop, hippity hay. One little bunny hopped away. Well, how many are there now? One, two, three, four. Hippity hop, hippity hay. Four little bunnies went out to play. Hippity hop, hippity hey. One little bunny hopped away. Now we have one, two, three. Three little bunnies. Hippity hop, hippity hey. Three little bunnies went out to play. Hippity hop, hippity hey. One little bunny just hopped away. And now we have one, two. Hippity hop, hippity hey. Two little bunnies went out to play. Hippity hop, hippity hey. One little bunny hopped away. And now we just have one. Hippity hop, hippity hey. One little bunny went out to play. Hippity hop. Hippity hey, one little bunny hopped away. Well, hippity hop, hippity hey, no more bunnies are playing today. Hippity hop, hippity hey, I hope they come back another day. Let's bring them back. One, two, three, four, five. And now they're ready to play again. And we're ready for one more story. This story is called Finding Spring by Karen Berger. Oh, the forest was growing cold. Mama said that soon it will be time to sleep. But all Maurice could think about was his first spring. Spring, 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 he sang as he filled up on berries. I wish it was spring right now, Maurice told Mama. Waiting is hard, she said. Right now, it's time to sleep. Maybe you will dream about spring, Mama whispered. Soon, she was softly snoring, but Maurice was wide awake. I will go find spring, he said, and off he went. Everyone in the forest was busy. I am looking for spring, Maurice told Squirrel. <laughs> that might take a while, Squirrel chittered turning to bury a large acorn. 
I am looking for spring, he told Rabbit. Not yet, Rabbit giggled before dashing into his warm burrow. Deer didn't even look up from her grass. I'm looking for spring, he told Robin. Everything in its time, she said, and then she flew south. The woods smelled musky. Mm, and there was something new and tangy in the air. <gasps> I smell spring, said Maurice, as he hurried along. Suddenly, Maurice felt an icy sting on his nose. Is that spring, he asked. A beautiful crystal landed on his paw. Spring! The crystal disappeared, but soon there was another and another and another. Maurice chased after them. Spring was hard to catch. He chased them past dry leaves, past bare branches, over the frozen stream. Uh-oh, does that look like spring to you boys and girls? He chased all the way to the great hill. Wow, said Maurice. Spring, spring, I found spring, he sang as he scooped up a bit to take home. But back in the den, Maurice snuggled happily against Mama, and then he slept and slept <sighs> and slept. Well, when he woke up, everyone had already gathered in the meadow. I brought you some spring, Maurice announced, but when he opened his scarf, spring was gone. Where is it, he asked. Well, spring can be hard to find, said Robin. Maybe it's hiding, Rabbit giggled. Deer just blinked. Sometimes you really have to search, said Squirrel. Let's look again, Mama said. So Maurice led them back through the forest. He saw blooming branches and bright green buds. He saw the rushing stream. Everything had changed, and Maurice knew just what to do. To the great hill, he cried, and at last, ah, oh, there it was. Maurice had finally found spring. All right, boys and girls, that's all the time we have today, and I wish you luck in finding spring. Bye. Say goodbye.